A landmark agreement to protect shark species threatened with extinction was signed by Mr. Johnson Tirabiong, the president of Palau, in 2009. This marks Palau as the first nation in the world to grant full protection status to shark populations. On direct request by the President, the Micronesian Shark Foundation was granted full access to conduct research to analyse the effect of human influence on the shark populations in Palauan territory. In June 2012, the Micronesian Shark Foundation embarked on a scientific expedition. It is the first of its kind to the southern boundaries of the Palauan territory. This expedition is only possible because of the courageous private donors. Well, I think the real aim of this, of what we're doing here, is is drawing some attention to the fact that there's an ecological disaster going on here. Kenneth Johnny is our boat captain and dive guide, together with Ken Tarkon, who lived for more than three years as a ranger on Helen Reef. Their adventure stories are filled with pelagic fish and oceanic shark encounters. Tiger sharks, silver tips, hammerheads, just to mention a few. Well, the scary thing is we have this, we have a war on fish and we're winning because we've got a couple of things. We've got technology, we can now go further. We can now use things like chart plotters where we can find exactly where the animals are. And we have very, very large gears. So we're talking about a gill net. We can talk about something that's maybe 800 meters or nearly a kilometer long. Um, it's very deep and it's gonna kill everything which it catches. The expedition funded the vessel, President Rimelik, to join forces with the Sea Hunter 3 and fight off illegal fishing vessels. We rendezvous at Helen Reef and share our first devastating observations with their crew. You go to places now around like the Samoa, uh, Cook Islands, French Polynesia, many of the other places in the Pacific, you can't see that many sharks anymore because basically they've sold them. They've sold them to Chinese traders to sell for shark fin soup. Fishing lines, coral covered with nets, and a lack of fish were not the only proof of illegal fishing. This Indonesian fishing vessel, Clarissa, ran aground in early February 2011. These nets, often nearly invisible in the dim light, can be left tangled on rocky reef or drifting in the open sea. They can entangle fish, dolphins, sea turtles, sharks, seabirds and other creatures. But this is, a, this is really a showcase of what's been happening to all the islands. And uh, the scary part is that it's coming closer and closer. Uh, people of Palau thought, oh, well, maybe it's happening only far away. But the less fish they'll have, they'll come closer to Koror and uh, the main resource. And it's, uh, it's a big threat. Three times they come to Helen Griffiths. They, they collect cucumber. everything, sea cucumber sea and... Uh, everything, and huh? everything, Oh, yeah, I didn't see many sea cucumbers there. Yes. <gasps> no big fish, no sharks. Without sharks, we already know that the reefs are doomed and uh, they're going to suffer, so it's frustrating. By special request, the team was granted permission to visit 53 Filipino fishermen detained in Palau for illegal fishing. They are awaiting a court verdict. But do you catch a lot of sharks also? Only, only three, only. Small, mm -hmm. two pieces only. Uh, Palau, uh, plenty fish. Plenty, but in Philippines? No more. Wala na. Wala na. We need to do something to prevent it. We need to keep this jewel. It's a jewel. It's an, it's an amazing place. We need to keep it flourishing and alive because these reefs are almost gone. There's not many of them around the globe. <laughs> 